Hi there, it's Lewis from Data Raid, and welcome to Data Explained. Imagine if you could know the best location to get the most amount of foot traffic to your brick and mortar store. Or even if you could better understand customer behavior within your store. Or if you could even reach out and target customers at times with the right messages at times when they're most likely to buy. Well, our topic for today, location data, can help with all this and more. So what exactly is location data? Well, to give you a quick definition, location data is information about the geographical position of devices or objects. Now, unlike its cousin, point of interest data, which is all about static structures, location data tends to be about things that can move. Now, looking at some of the most common location data attributes, you can see that it's anything that tells us a specific location at a specific time. This could be its coordinates, helped by latitude and longitude, which is also helped through a technique called horizontal accuracy. Altitude and elevation tells us the height above or below sea level, and timestamps help us to either track movement over time or look at continuously moving objects. Now, when we come here, we get to identifiers. Identifiers are either a string of digits or a piece of code that are unique to a device or a signal that help it stand out and be identified among all the rest. The IP address comes from your Wi-Fi signal and identifiers come from mobile phones. Now this gives us an idea of what the actual sources of location data are. They're the objects that we interact with and use on our daily basis, smartphone, Wi-Fi signals, laptops, even things like tablets. But how is location data collected from these sources? Well, the primary method for this is a location signal. A location signal can be one of these four types and it's sent to the device, which is then received, which then helps us find the device's position. It could be a Wi-Fi signal. Now, a Wi-Fi signal functions best indoors. It's very precise and accurate, but the big downside to Wi-Fi signals is that they're static and they can't really track continuously moving objects. But that's why we have things like a GPS signal. A GPS signal functions best outdoors. It's accurate to a 4.9 meter radius at the best of times, and it comes from a satellite signal out in our atmosphere. However, the big drawback to GPS signals is that although they can track continuously moving objects, if that object goes under a bridge or into a big shopping center or even underground, the signal can become unreliable. But for inside big shopping centers, we have things like beacons. Beacons function best indoors. They work by using a Bluetooth signal, which then connects to your smartphone, and they can track continuously moving objects. Most stores use them uh, in their store locations on various floor levels, because the downside is their radius and the level area in which they can track in is quite limited. However, by placing them on multiple levels or at different points in your store, you can easily counteract this. And then finally, user registration. Now this isn't technically a location signal. This is information given by a user that can then help uh, determine their actual location. If you've ever signed into an app or into a free Wi-Fi network, you'll have often used your email address or your postcode. And this can help the app provider or the newsletter or Wi-Fi provider to get a rough idea of your general location. Now, the big downside to this is it is very imprecise. It's only a rough idea, and the information you give may not be up to date. However, that's not necessarily uh, a bad thing when it comes to location data. It all depends on your use case. Looking at things like predictions and verifications, it can be very helpful to have up-to-date data, but it's also useful to have had data that's been timestamped so you can track behavior or uh, actions or trends over time. For predictions, this could be things in finance like KPIs or the potential growth of a business. And when it comes to verification, this is often uh, used for things like insurance to verify the specific details of an insurance claim. Moving on to property evaluation, people who want to invest in retail really need to know what's going on in the area. This could be things like demographics um, movements or neighborhood movement trends, footfall traffic, the automobile traffic of an area, or even how local businesses are performing. 
Taking that to a grander scale, got things like smart cities, which is government initiatives to make a city the best possible place for its inhabitants. Be that the placement of playgrounds or parks or public facilities, or even looking at where the best place to place doctors or hospitals might be. Footfall traffic. Now you'll have heard me mention footfall traffic along the prior use cases, because footfall traffic is really the goldmine for location data. It basically is showing the amount of people who walk past an area. But this has so many different use cases. It could be used in any of the number I've just said there, and it can especially be used in helping brick and mortar stores find the right location. Finally, we've got geofencing and targeted advertising. Now, we've put these two together because they often work in tandem. A geofence is a virtual boundary around a specific point in the middle, which is often a point of interest. And the way geofences work is they can track who moves in, out, or how long a device, thereby a person as a proxy, uh, spends inside the area. And the way this works is you can then send targeted advertisements to users who have opted in and then walk inside the geofences capture area. So for example, uh, if you pull up to a copy shop, you may enter their geofence and be sent a discount for the coffee shop. You're more likely to buy because you're in the area and now you've just got a discount. Win-win. But when we start talking about things like tracking people's location or sending really personalized targeted adverts, it can all start to get a little bit invasive, which is why when you talk about location data, when you're going to buy location data, there are a few things that you must consider. Firstly, consent. Note I mentioned opted in users. So you need to make sure that any data you're purchasing has been collected using proper guidelines. This could be the CCPA in California or the GDPR in Europe. Make sure you know the laws of your country. Now, when we're talking about location data specifically and we're talking about its quality, there are two things you must consider, accuracy and precision. Accuracy is how close the reading of the device is to the device's actual location. And precision is any more other information about the device's location. So this could be its coordinates, its altitude or elevation, or even timestamps. And now, speaking of timestamps, they are very important in their own right when it comes to location data. If you want to track movement over time, you need to know when that behavior occurred. It's also very important for tracking continuously moving objects so you know where they are in real time. And finally, scale. When you're purchasing location data, you must make sure that you're purchasing it on a scale for what you're going to be using it for. Anyway, that's been our quick overview video of what location data is. Thank you for watching. Be sure to leave your thoughts and comments down in the comments section below and tell us what you would like to see in next week's video. I've been Lewis from DataRaid and I'll see you next time.